Former Teamster President James Hoffa is Tom's guest on The Tomorrow Show, next. You see any other cold capsule, compare itself to six of these, three of these, but not to one of these. Dristan capsules. Did you know Dristan capsules are the one with the decongestant doctors prescribe most? Did you know Dristan capsules are the one with the formula preferred five to one by doctors responding to a survey? While the other capsule didn't make the comparison, you can. Dristan capsules. We're the one. I finally got used to my cup of soft parquet margarine saying, butter. <laughs> Well, after all, the flavor does say butter. <laughs> and then today, I bought my parquet in a big one-pound bowl. Oh, they come in such pretty colors, and they're great for leftovers. But when I opened the lid, expecting to hear butter, do you know what my big one-pound bowl of parquet said? Butter. <laughs> parquet margarine in the one-pound bowl from Kraft. <laughs> This week, TV Guide's cover story profiles Freddie Prinze of Chico and the Man. TV Guide. KNBC, Los Angeles. Good morning, everybody. Here at the office, let me acknowledge all the people who write letters in here asking questions about the program. They write letters to the guests that we've had on the air, and oftentimes we are compelled because of a lack of staff and a lack of money, and I suppose a little bit of laziness. We do not send back personal letters in many cases, but we send back a dumb form letter, and I know that that is not satisfactory, but it is the best that we can do, and I hope you'll bear with it, and oftentimes it's all you're going to get back, but keep the letters and the suggestions coming because you'd be surprised how many of the programs that we do in this series depend upon the ideas that you, our viewers, send to us. We have but one guest with us this morning. He is one of the most uh, notable personalities of the last 40 years in this country. His name is Jimmy Hoffa, and he'll begin our conversation right after these announcements, and I hope all of you stay tuned. Thank you. child's cold sounds like this you're probably just giving him aspirin but aspirin alone can't help sniffles that's why congesperin the children's cold tablet combines children's aspirin plus a decongestant to help clear stuffiness and sniffles congesperin it helps more than aspirin because it is more than aspirin hear how it works instant wax shine as you dust You've been hearing things like that for years. But is waxing all that instant when you only need to dust? Watch. With spray wax, you have all this rubbing. But there's no wax in end dust. It just coats your cloth with tiny beads that trap dust. You just wipe, and it brings back the shine. Use wax when you have to, sure. But every time you dust, use end dust. It gets rid of dust in half the time of waxing. Admiral has what today's consumers want in a refrigerator. Features like an automatic ice maker, frigid meat keeper, easy to clean tempered glass shelves, adjustable to fit your needs. All this plus economy. The new three-door Admiral duplex has been re-engineered to use up to 30% less electricity than the previous model. In just one year, that could save enough electricity to light an average home for eight months. Features plus economy. That's Admiral quality. It deserves a closer look for your home. Eyes tired from reading or smoke-filled air? Trust Murine too to refresh them. Eyes burning from driving at night or constant strain? Trust Murine too to soothe them. Eyes bothered by sun or wind? Trust Murine too to relieve them. And when your eyes become itchy or irritated from colds or allergy and turn bloodshot, trust Murine too to clear them up fast. Murine too, a name you can trust next to your eyes. Jimmy Hoffa is certainly one of the most colorful personalities on the American political and labor stage over the last 40 years, and we are pleased to have him as our guest tonight. And here is Jimmy Hoffa. How has the labor movement, do you think, and I want to spend some time here on labor, and then we'll talk about prisons, because I know that you are now actively involved in prisons and talking about conditions there and recommending some changes that ought to be made, most of which I think thinking people would agree with. 
How do you think the labor movement has changed in these times of economic uncertainty in this country when there are so many guys and so many women who don't have jobs because of the sorry state of the economy right now? Well, I would say the labor movement hasn't changed basically from the demands made on employers such as the union security, vacations, holidays, fringes, wages, hours, and seniority. But since, since the World War II and with the employment ratio that we've had, more or less you haven't had to fight scabs, uh, fight injunctions, and do the 101 things that you had to do, say, from 32 all the way up to uh, 42. Mm -hmm. But during that period of 32 to 42, which I have predicted and always said that no employer ever accepts a union, tolerates it. And at the very minute he gets a surplus of labor, he will immediately do what they're doing in Florida today, cut the wages, get more productivity, and generally abuse labor. Here in New York, the policemen, <clears throat> as you might know or you might not know, are now facing layoffs in some areas, especially in the rookie areas. The new cops on the street are facing layoffs in a couple of months because of a budget problem here in the city of New York. The police and the, uh, and the PBA, the Patrolman's Benevolent Association here in New York, are now voting on whether to give back five holidays and to save the city that money to allow the 500 or so rookie cops to continue in their jobs. I can't remember when any union rank and file even voted on giving back five paid holidays. Does that represent any kind of a change in thinking? Very dangerous precedent to establish. And if I was a representative of that union, despite the fact that they feeling sorry for the new police, feeling sorry for their family, I still would not recommend that you reduce what it took years to get, because it'll take you years to recapture it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they're faced with losing jobs, Jimmy. On the other hand, if five days is going to maintain the stability of the police department in the city of New York with all the policemen they have, then it's in a dangerous period at, all, at the very beginning. And that will not ultimately settle the question, because as they cut the budget, as inflation erodes away, the taxpayers, the tax amount of money they get, they'll want to take something else away. And ultimately, they will lose what it took the last 10 years to get. Next will be the pension, as they're now trying to do in Detroit. Uh, next will be the question of giving up uh, free days. And it just doesn't work out. The Teamsters Union is faced with that right now. Then you don't see this <clears throat> as possibly a modification of demands, where labor came in and said, we must have this at every bargaining session, but now might be beginning to turn the coin around and say, look, maybe to keep jobs and to help the economy, we will give back some of these benefits, no matter how, how hard won they might have been. I am not in favor of, never will be, never advocated, to give generally an industry a relief from contractual provisions. Individual companies that get temporarily in trouble, you temporarily give them relief. But ultimately, if you start giving back conditions that you fought all these years, and I remember the policeman's fight I was part of at the very beginning of their organization here in New York, they will have disastrous results on any labor union. It does not, five days, cannot any way in the world save New York Police Department, and it certainly will give the, the city an every turn of the, of the taxpayer dollar shortage a demand to take something else away. And I feel sorry for them. I know what's going on with their families but that will not solve the problem. Good evening. It's done, finished, and over. Unconditional surrender of South Vietnam to the communist Viet Cong. Communist troops riding on tanks and jeeps are at this moment inside Saigon, some of them already inside the grounds of the presidential palace where rifle fire was heard as government troops fired their rifles into the air, an apparent salute of some sort. South Vietnamese troops are leaving their positions and are now turning in their weapons inside Saigon and the surrounding area. The White House tonight has no comment on the fall of South Vietnam, but several people we talked to told us what the end of the war means to them. Well, it's beautiful that it's over. Because uh, they, oh, they were there quite a long time and it didn't do any good. But I'm glad that it's over. I think it's an awful tragedy, but I don't think that uh, all of us people here should be responsible for it all. I'm glad. I'm glad that it's ending. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't think that uh, we should feel uh, 
any sense of uh, great celebration on the one hand, those of us who are against the war, or great despair and guilt uh, uh, and shame on the other for those who uh, supported the war. I think now uh, a debate on what our foreign policy should be is what's called for it. We should have been out of there 15 years ago. There's no, we, we didn't have any business with those people over there, you know. We've got enough problems around here to, without worrying about what they're, what's happening over there. Well, I feel sorry that we had, had to lose 50,000 people there, young men. That's what I feel. Barry Goldwater had the right idea. That's a long time ago, and we missed the boat. We all have a sense of relief that the thing's over. But I think we also have cause for a sense of shame because we could have won that war, but we were prevented from doing so. Tonight, one of the byproducts of that war, hundreds of Vietnamese refugees are spending their first night in Southern California. They arrive throughout the day at Norton Air Base near San Bernardino and at El Toro in Orange County, where 356 stepped off this DC-10 after a 7,000-mile flight from Guam. The last Americans were leaving Saigon. The first significant numbers of South Vietnamese refugees were arriving here at the El Toro Marine Base in Orange County. Many of them, obviously, Americans with their families. Their first stop here will be a quick health check. The El Toro Marine Base. From there, they will be loaded onto buses and taken to Camp Pendleton. This is only the first of, we are told, nine flights today and an estimated 20,000 refugees that will be landing here at the El Toro Marine Base. And they will be making their home at Camp Pendleton for probably about 90 days. Here at Camp Pendleton, the Vietnamese evacuees were set up in Quonset huts. They settled in and then moved on to the Marine Mess Hall for an early dinner. The Americans on today's flight, who have been fighting desperately to get their dependents out of Vietnam for weeks, were also brought here. They were an impatient group as they talked to immigration officials about gathering their dependents and moving on to their homes. Meantime, the Vietnamese moved around their new surroundings, looking anxious, but relieved. Relieved to be in a safe place. 19-year-old Lee Hong Nok Elder married a Californian in January. He left Vietnam and came home shortly after the marriage. She took today's flight to join him. I asked her how she felt leaving her homeland. I feel sad, but um, I'm not too sad because I'm over here, I feel more safe, you know. I don't have to worry because over there I have to worry day and night, you know. I, I wonder when I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah, because I um, cannot tell when the world will come and pass. Know? This first group to arrive at Camp Pendleton will be moving out soon, some as early as tonight. They are all dependents of American citizens. They all have new homes to go to. And most, although they're sad about the fate of their homeland, seem happy to be here and looking forward to starting their new lives. Nathan Roberts, Channel 2 News at Camp Pendleton.